Hello and a very warm welcome to this special as we discuss uh, the impact of COVID-19 that is ravaging the country. Even as we see the daily vaccination have hit an all-time low because of an acute shortage of vaccines in the country, I have with me Dr. Chandrakant Lahiria, the perfect person really to talk about this. He's written a paper on the history of vaccine and vaccination in India. He's uh, a noted epidemiologist. He is a public health policy expert, uh, has written a book on COVID with Dr. Randeep Kuleria and Dr. Gagandeep Kang. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lahiria, for taking the time out. Let's get straight into it then. First of all, sir, uh, the national numbers may have declined of COVID, but you see COVID now reaching rural parts of this country where you know, I was talking to a social worker who's working in Haryana and villages in Haryana. He said an oximeter is a privilege here. What are you talking about? Oxygen cylinders and concentrators. So we're dealing with a completely different beast uh, as it reaches rural areas. What is uh, the way to manage it in uh, smaller towns and villages? Meherji, thank you very much for this invitation. The country should have been ready for this uh, situation and we should have done enough, a lot of planning in the last 15 months since the pandemic. Yet we know that the uh, uh, government of India released the national guidelines or guidelines for uh, containment and management of pandemic in, uh, in rural and peri-urban areas a few days ago. Now, uh, this actually reflects how slow the government response to pandemic is that 15 months into pandemic, the guidelines for rural or peri-urban areas are coming. What should be done? The guidelines are there. People are falling sick. Rural healthcare infrastructure is really weak. It is nearly dysfunctional. Now, the requirement is that uh, the health system infrastructure in rural parts and the Panchayati Raj institutions, they need to work together. The guidelines talks about setting up uh, isolation centers in every village, but it requires far more. The health system functionary, which are there in the rural area, need to actually be activated. Health services, whatever basic health services are available in the rural area, need to coordinate with the village people. The COVID-19 vaccination need to be taken to the villages in through a mobile van based approach. The testing can be all can be increased in similar fashion where the mobile van based sample collection units are set up. So we need to do a lot of at the village level, but also the primary health centers in the rural India, there are 30,000 and each one has six beds. Those beds are non-functional. The providers are not there, doctor, nurses are not there, the medicines are not there. In the wake of this pandemic, urgently and immediately those PHCs need to be made functional. You talked about vaccination and how vaccines need to reach rural areas, but they're not even uh, you know, reaching peri-urban and urban areas. Uh, there's an acute shortage, as I said earlier. Now, uh, the government has said that 51 crore vaccines would be made available by July and 216 crore by the end of the year. How feasible do you think this claim is? Okay, so this 51 crore, I believe, uh, is the total number of vaccinations which are expected to be done by end July in India. Till now, around 18 crore vaccination have been done. And then we expect that in coming months, another 33 crore of vaccination can be done. That's the uh, expected supply likely to be available by end July. That's what government is saying. So while I agree that we can close, reach somewhere close to the 51 crore total vaccination, which does not mean that 51 crore people will be fully vaccinated, but some of them will receive both shots and the remaining will receive single shot, but that is feasible. However, I don't think that uh, India can have 2.16 billion or 216 crore vaccines available in the period of August to December 2021. That's completely unrealistic. We know that vaccine manufacturers always overestimate their production capacity. We have seen this in the past. One of the leading manufacturers last year had said but that by January 2021, it would have a production capacity of 100 million. That manufacturer is still struggling to ramp up the production capacity and now new timeline for that 100 million is by July 2021. So these are the real challenges. It's not fault of a manufacturer or anybody. Manufacturers are always ambitious, but the vaccine production is a complex process. It takes time. It requires a lot of investment and planning. So uh, it is a slow process. And with that argument exactly, we cannot expect that India can have 206, uh, 216 crore uh, 
dosage available during August to December 2021. So you've led me to the next question, Dr. Lahiria, that yes, there is an acute shortage, but what we saw, especially when this vaccination drive began, was uh, a huge amount of vaccine hesitancy, right? You saw that especially in rural areas, but you even saw it in urban areas because, you know, people said they weren't sure of the vaccination. Some said um, this is hardly affecting us. The, you know, the, it's gone. Like we said before, the, for, the second wave came around. Um, that is now going to be a big challenge as well. And even as, uh, as they try to get the vaccine, the supply itself, should that work start from here on the awareness of uh, you know uh, uh, creating awareness so that uh, people get the vaccine, people are ready to get that vaccine, especially like you said in uh, peri-urban areas. When it comes to vaccine hesitancy, it is an integral part of vaccine delivery program or vaccination program. Even before COVID-19 vaccination started, there was a survey conducted in uh, Indian cities. This was a telephonic survey where uh, the researchers had asked uh, uh, the participant that uh, if a COVID-19 vaccine becomes available, will they be willing to get vaccine? And that that time no vaccine was available. There was no discussion about safety and efficacy or even the licensing process. And in that survey, they found that 13% of the total participants uh, respondent said that they would not take, take any vaccine, no matter what. And there were another around 26 or 27 percent, they were um, ambiguous. So 60 percent people were willing to get vaccinated, but 40 percent were either not willing to get vaccinated or said no. And so these are the reality. The vaccine hesitancy always exists in all the programs. So what these vaccination programs should do, they should develop an effective communication strategy. And this communication strategy should be based upon uh, uh, real grassroots understanding of what are the concerns of the people, why they are making a particular type of choice and, and those should be addressed. So this, this kind of communication campaign should be based upon in, uh, information collected from the ground, but also on the rolling basis that you keep collecting regular information to understand people and communication strategy and material should be devised accordingly. Dr. Lahiri, I was listening to Dr. Devi Shetty in an interview where he said uh, that, you know, and he, because he says that he performs or his hospital performs 14% of heart surgeries in the country. And so they know how to deal with uh, pharmaceutical companies. He says that if you approach a vaccine manufacturer with a huge order, with a bulk order and give him advance, he will ramp up the production. And that's how they work. They have to be given that trust they have to be given a huge order. That's when they will be able to ramp up the production. Now in India, what is happening is that you've uh, you know decentralized the whole process. You're asking the state to fend for themselves, go place your order, get the order on your own in a free market. How big a problem is that going to be given that there is an acute uh, vaccine shortage and you need the vaccines ASAP? I believe that you, you can solve a problem by throwing money at it. So the current challenge of vaccine manufacturer is very different than uh, giving them additional money or resources. Rather, the key challenge is the sufficient planning for a scaling of vaccine production and the right kind of coordination between government and vaccine manufacturers was not done. We know that uh, high income countries such as United States and Europe, uh, even UK, and Canada had started the di dialogue with vaccine manufacturers well in advance, somewhere in May, June, 2020. And they started having uh, advanced purchase agreement with the manufacturers to uh, buy the vaccines, even when the vaccines just entered the clinical trial stage. And that is a kind of planning which should have been done in, in, in India. India did not do that planning. In the current setting, uh, what we also need to remember and what where India has uh, uh, aired that uh, Indian government was developing co-vaccine with the Bharat Biotech and for production of that vaccine, we know that the current or existing production capacity of uh, Bharat Biotech is relatively low. The thinking and planning to scale up that uh, vaccine production, which is being done now, should have started a few months ago. And I am also sure that uh, while individual uh, or a, a particular hospital or institute may have some experience in procurement, but Indian government 
as a uh, as a single entity has far bigger experience a longer experience in dealing with procurement and supplies and they know it is somewhere uh, it it is somewhat not uh, thought uh, or well planned as we have seen in the in the as a covid 19 vaccination rolling strategy and i think it's time for rethink and uh, a few concrete actions need to be taken